In this video, we'll speculate on three types of giant alien life. There's something majestic about giant organisms like whales or redwood trees. Their sheer size gives us a sense of awe and wonder. They humble us. But even the largest life on Earth might seem small compared to what could evolve on alien worlds. So how big can life get? And what could these giants look like? That is what we'll explore in this episode. And we'll examine three types of giant life. Landwalking giants, ocean giants, and atmospheric giants. But before we dive into that, there's a crucial scientific question we need to answer. Why would life even evolve to become giant in the first place? Being big comes with a price. It takes huge amounts of energy to grow and maintain a massive body over time. It also creates serious structural challenges. The skeleton must support immense weight. The heart must pump blood across vast distances. And the entire organism becomes more vulnerable to overheating or fall injury. But being a giant can also be an advantage. Being tall or large can give access to new energy sources. Take giraffes. Their long necks let them reach food that others can't reach. Another advantage could be to deter predators. Large, strong creatures are harder and riskier to attack. Finally, size can be a mating signal. Maintaining a large body is hard. Only the evolutionary fittest can do it. There could be many other advantages why it's good to grow big. So if you have any good ideas, feel free to share it in the comments below. Let's focus on our first type of giant life, landwalking giants. On land, one of the main constraints to growing big is gravity. A massive size could result in an animal collapsing under its own weight and moving becomes impossible. But it's not just gravity. A giant terrestrial creature needs a constant supply of energy just to stay alive. So how could life overcome this? One way is that they evolve on a planet with lower gravity it has been estimated that to maintain Earth-like conditions that are friendly to life, a planet needs at least 30 to 50 percent the gravity of Earth. With lower gravity, animals could grow larger, without needing as much muscle and bone to stay upright. But that's just part of it. On Earth, bones are made of calcium phosphate, but on other worlds, biology might have access to different base materials, allowing evolution to create tissues using exotic substances that are stronger and lighter than anything on Earth. Or, life might take an entirely different evolutionary path. For example, one where bones or support structures are made from carbon-based composites, like carbon fiber, or other ultra-strong materials we can barely imagine. Perhaps there is a point where size would not be limited by gravity, but by energy. So as a starting point for giant life that walks on land, Let's imagine a plant-eating giant similar to the sauropod that is in an evolutionary race with towering alien trees. As evolution over generations drives the trees to grow taller to avoid being eaten, the giants must grow taller to keep feeding. Or here are some wild speculations. What if organisms could harvest the energy of wind and evolve to be giant biological wind-like turbines? Or imagine giant towering biological rods stretching into the sky to absorb the electrical energy of lightning. It is impossible for us to accurately predict how big life walking on land could become. But with the right environment, and evolution has evolved the most superior traits, I don't think it's unreasonable to guess that life on land could become massive, many times the size of the largest animals that have walked our planet. But when gravity is not a limiting factor, how big can life get? Let's start in the oceans. Here, gravity is no longer a major constraint. Organisms can float by buoyancy, supporting massive bodies. That's why the largest animal to ever exist is marine, the blue whale. But even in the sea, size has limits. Two major factors being energy availability and oxygen supply. Let's assume that our alien ocean giant is similar to a whale. It's a filter feeder, which is an animal that extracts tiny organisms from large volumes of water. If this planet's oceans are richer in food than Earth's, and if its organisms have more efficient metabolisms, they could extract more energy from less food. That means more energy available to grow and maintain giant bodies. But oxygen could still be a constraint. Oxygen dissolves poorly in water. This limits how much can be used for metabolism, especially in massive animals. Whales solve this by surfacing to breathe air. Let's assume that our alien giant does the same. 
In that case, there might even be an evolutionary pressure to stay near the surface, where food is dense and oxygen is easier to access. Imagine giant surface floating vacuum machines riding rich ocean currents, scooping up vast amounts of plankton. If the energy rich currents are stable over long periods of time, we could imagine that our whale like creatures would need to move less and less. They might even evolve to become sedentary if the waters are shallow, anchoring themselves on the ocean floor while permanently breathing oxygen through tall pipe like structures. The lack of needing to move means that more resources could be directed at growing bigger, and vast colonies of these creatures could form land like landscapes where whole ecosystems could evolve. With high energy efficiency and surface breathing, ocean life could likely reach monumental sizes. There is another type of world where gravity does not majorly limit the size of life. Worlds with dense atmospheres, such as Jupiter or Venus. Like in the oceans, life here can float by buoyancy. And just like in the oceans, there are other factors limiting their size. Again, energy could be a major limiting factor. So how can this be overcome? Let's imagine a giant floating organism. We could speculate on giant sky whales, and I love this concept. But since we have just looked at whales in the ocean, I'll let myself be inspired by Carl Sagan and Edmund Sulpitas floaters from the TV series Cosmos. Let's imagine giant floating organisms. They could drift passively, harvesting energy from photosynthesis. The bigger they are, the more surface area they have to absorb light, and the more energy they can produce. But there's a danger. Sinking too deep, getting crushed by the strong pressure in the lower parts of the atmosphere. To stay aloft, they could be filled with gas sacs containing helium or hydrogen. And here's also another advantage to being big. Heat retention. Big creatures hold on to heat longer. That heat could warm air inside them. And just like a hot air balloon, it would help them stay afloat. And if they don't move, they don't need muscles or energy for locomotion allowing them to grow even larger. Each floater could be like a giant island, together forming ever-drifting land areas where terrestrial life might evolve. If energy is abundant and gravity is offset by buoyancy, then atmospheric life could host some of the biggest possible life. I actually think I've stayed on the conservative side on how big life could actually get. If we expand our imagination beyond animals to fungi or other kinds of superorganisms or exotic chemistries, then perhaps life could become bigger than we can even dare to imagine. And here's a question for you. What is the biggest living thing you can imagine? Share your thoughts in the comments. If you think that the giant organisms discussed in this video are strange and otherworldly, you'll enjoy my other video on non-carbon based life, where I explore how alien organisms might live in extreme environments. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss any other videos on what alien life might look like.